In this video, I will introduce you to the use of ketamine in treating depression. Welcome to my channel. My name is Samuel Kohtala. I'm a neuropharmacologist by training and I have spent my past few years studying the mechanisms of action of drugs like ketamine. Now, in this video, I will discuss some of the aspects related to the use of ketamine in treating depression. But before we go into that, let me say a few words about depression as a psychiatric disorder. First of all, depression is an incredibly common psychiatric disorder. In fact, every one out of six of us comes down with depression at some point in their lifetime. It amounts to around 260 million people suffering from depression worldwide. And this, of course, amounts to an immense amount of individual suffering for the patients and their relatives, and also an immense amount of economic cost to society. Depression is also a significant risk factor for suicide. The most common treatment options are conventional antidepressants, uh, such as selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or SSRIs and psychotherapy. In an optimal situation, the two are combined, but this is often limited by uh, the available resources. Unfortunately, the currently available antidepressants work rather slowly, if at all. Patients may have to try out several different drug treatments over the period of months or even years, and a, a large portion of patients still remain without a significant benefit. Those who have tried several different treatment options without help are considered treatment-resistant patients. For them, there are also options available like electroconvulsive therapy and more recently ketamine. Ketamine is typically given as an intravenous infusion at a dose of 0.5 mg per kilogram over a period of 40 minutes. This results in a, a sub-anesthetic state, meaning that the patients are not unconscious. In fact, they remain quite responsive and are able to, for example, answer questions. They might feel a little bit dizzy or dissociated, but they are still there. There's a change in consciousness, but it's not very dramatic. And indeed, they are free to leave within a few hours of the infusion. Surprisingly, some of the patients start to improve already during the infusion. The symptoms of depression typically then uh, are reduced uh, in the following hours and reach a peak around 24 hours after, after the infusion or the single dose of ketamine. This is remarkably fast when compared to conventional antidepressants, which have to be taken for several weeks or months before any significant benefit starts to emerge. Unfortunately, the symptoms of depression then start to return within a week or two after ketamine treatment, but another dose can be given as required. Nevertheless, ketamine offers a completely new avenue for the treatment of depression where uh, the symptoms can be rapidly reduced and also suicidal thoughts can be reduced uh, only after a single treatment session. This allows patients suffering from severe depression to remain more functional and may also facilitate the receptiveness to psychotherapy while giving uh, conventional antidepressants more time to act. The long-term effects of ketamine are not very well studied, but ketamine can be given for at least a period of six months. This is typically enough for the depressive episode to pass. Now, these remarkable properties of ketamine have caused quite a lot of interest in the research community, as well as the pharmaceutical industry, trying to find out new treatment options for depression. However, there have been no new drugs that would act uh, as effectively as ketamine or could produce a, a rapid amelioration of depressive symptoms. Moreover, 
While the mechanisms underlying ketamine's antidepressant effects have been very intensively studied for the past several decades, there is still no consensus on what is the mechanism behind ketamine's antidepressant action. Hopefully, future studies will shed light on these mechanisms and we will be able to, for example, optimize the currently used treatment paradigms or perhaps even develop new drugs that are more effective than ketamine. With that being said, I thank you for watching. If you'd like to hear more about ketamine or other neuropharmacology topics, remember to check out these other videos I have here on the screen somewhere. What? Here.